welcome to New Song English Ministries. My name is Boyun, and I'm a member here at New Song, and I'm also on staff of InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at UT Dallas. We just wanted to give you a warm welcome and to invite you into our community and into our family today. We're so thankful and excited that you're here, and if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Uh, we would be more than happy to give you a hand, especially in the midst of a pandemic. We hope that your household and that you yourself are doing well and that you're all healthy. Um, I'm going to invite us into prayer right now. We're going to pray for the pastor and for the message and for our time together. So let's go ahead and pray together. So yeah, Lord, we just thank you so much for um, our pastors and for this church, for this community where we can all gather together, even virtually during a pandemic, and just hear from you. Uh, we really pray for, yeah, just um, the Holy Spirit to really be working in this time, even virtually, that you would give us the convictions that you want us to have, and even, um, yeah, that we would hear something that would really stick with us um, and change our lives. And we pray for this time, we pray for the pastor, um, yeah, that you would just say pour wisdom and pour uh, your your spirit into him and really just, uh, yeah, have a message for us that is really applicable and relevant. So, yeah, we just really pray this um, all in your son's name. Amen.
Lord, uh, we come before you at this time of worship. And Lord, um, we specifically just really want to thank you, Lord, that we're able to really worship your name, that we're able to proclaim that because of your death and because of your life, Lord, that we're able to um, face tomorrow. We just thank you so much for um, how you're moving um, in our lives, in this church and in this nation. We thank you for really being a God who um, protects, and who watches and loves us despite the circumstances. We thank you so much. Please be with us um, as we continue to grow as a church. And um, we just pray all these things in your name. Amen. Good afternoon, New Song EM. I would just like to say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Even in these difficult times, God is continuing to uh, provide for us and watch over us. And as children of God, we would like to glorify Him through giving our offering. And so at this moment, I would like to lead us in prayer for our offering. But before we do that, uh, Chris Kwan will um, explain how to give offering online. So here is Chris. First, go to your bank's website and sign in. Then look for a pay or transfer button and select pay bills and add New Song Church as a payee and fill out the necessary information. Next, enter New Song Church's info as follows. Your account number will be your last name followed by the month of your birth and followed by the day of your birth as shown here. Step 3. Finally, all you have to do is set up bill pay by selecting New Song Church as the payee and enter your offering amount and click pay once the information is all correct. That's it. Thank you, Chris. At this moment, let us all bow our heads and go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for um, your mercy and grace. Thank you that you continue to pour your blessings and that you watch over us, even in these difficult times. Lord, as we give our offerings, I pray that you would use it for your kingdom, that it would be used to glorify you. And Lord, I pray that you would give us courage to share your love towards others. Help us to be brave uh, witnesses for your kingdom. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon, New Song English Ministry. I'm so glad that we can continue to gather in this season. Uh, as we uh, keep moving forward, uh, we ask that you guys would continue to pray for our EM. Uh, we've been pushing and, and, and prayerfully uh, figuring out how to uh, regather in person uh, because we really do believe that uh, gathering in person is uh, what is best for us in our spiritual walk, uh, for us to come together. And in many ways, the uh, distance and the social distancing, although it is safer physically, has definitely taken its toll spiritually. And so um, in many ways, we believe that um, our EM would benefit well from gathering again in person uh, with proper protocol. Uh, so um, as we continue to hash out the details, uh, we ask that you guys would be prayerful over our uh, EM, that our EM would be able to decide that well, but also that you guys uh, would be um, prayerfully deciding um, how you believe uh, you, wanted, you want to respond uh, once we do open up in person. Um, so as we continue to move forward, please, please continue to pray. With that, we're going to be going uh, into our sermon text for today, and we're going to be continuing in this series of thankfulness and thanksgiving. Uh, as leading up into uh, the Thanksgiving holiday, um, we have to have a heart uh, and decide uh, how we're going to respond in terms of our relationship to God, our relationship to others, and to the world, um, and even as we think forward. And so today's message is uh, give thanks for the future. Give thanks for the future. In a time where it might be difficult to see a future, uh, there is a lot that we can be thankful for. And so our text today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 
verses 12 to 24, but I'm going to be focusing on 16 to 18. So 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, and we're going to read this out loud together in one voice. And if you guys can rise with me in the honor of reading God's Word. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. We're going to read this together. Ready, begin. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Let's pray. Father God, as we go into this word, as we go into this message, we pray that your name will be lifted up, your name will be glorified. Um, Lord, open up our hearts to be thankful, but also to see why we can be thankful for our future. Lord, we uh, really just lift up everything to you. Give us peace, give us calm, and give us conviction to give you thanks. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today's message uh, is about being thankful for the future. And uh, in many ways, uh, it, it might seem hard because we don't know the future. Sure, if we knew the future, uh, it, we would be able to be thankful for what's to come. Um, I remember when I was younger, um, I would always pray for things that I wanted in the future. Always pray for things that I wanted in God's, and I would tell God, please give it to me. Give it to me in the future that I'm expecting for it. And it was never a heart of, of thankfulness. It was always a, a heart of wanting. And, and in the moments where uh, I realized that what was best for me was not receiving that, and when God didn't give it to me, there was definitely hardship and difficulty, um, a lot to wrestle with. And I never was thankful for, uh, for what I had because I saw what I didn't have. But in many ways, our thankfulness for the future is brought in from Thankfulness in the past and the present. Our thankfulness looking forward isn't always determined by what may or may not happen in the future, but determined by what has happened and what is happening. So the main point for today's message is that we work and plan for the future in thankfulness that Christ is faithful. We work and plan for the future in thankfulness that Christ is faithful. First point is, it is good for Christians to work and plan for the future. It is good for Christians to work and plan for the future. Um, when we look at the text of uh, Thessalonians, uh, we're looking at uh, a city called Thessalonica and the Christians in that city. And there was a specific culture. When, when Paul writes to the Thessalonians, it isn't out of a heart of they've done something gravely wrong. Um, in general, they've been doing well. In general, um, there's a lot of good news that has come out of Thessal uh, Thessalonica to Paul. And as he's wrestling through uh, writing this letter, one thing that we start to see and, and kind of acknowledge throughout this text is that there is still something that uh, Paul needs to write and respond to. There is still things that uh, the Thessalonians may be struggling with and uh, needs to be uh, written unto them. One of the biggest ideas is that um, the Thessalonians, they did have faith in God, but there are certain details, there are certain aspects of uh, the faith that, that they, they didn't quite understand. There was a lack of certain theological understandings that had made it difficult for them, and specifically talking about the afterlife, specifically talking about the afterlife. It is believed that the Thessalonians um, struggled with the understanding that um, if Christ hadn't come yet and they were to pass uh, specifically them thinking about those that have passed their family members that have already passed if Christ hasn't come then there's no way for them to be redeemed there's no way for them to be brought up into heaven uh, even if they had faith because they had passed before Christ came again uh, that they would not uh, receive that kind of um, blessing and that sort of um, uh, glory with Christ and so, if you think about that, these Thessalonians would struggle a lot with that theological aspect of Christ's second coming. Well, Christ, why would you leave us and then come, say you're going to come again later if it means that our relatives or the people that pass, and maybe even us, we may not see the glory. Uh, we may not be, see the glory of Christ. We may not see heaven afterwards. This uh, sort of struggle in theological understanding made it very difficult for them. And it was a key point where many um, of these Thessalonians would struggle 
would struggle with the future. They would be fearful of the future. Another aspect of the culture uh, in, in, with the Christians in Thessalonica was that there was a heavy reliance on wealthier Christians. Uh, they would look to the wealthy Christians to provide and to help. Um, in many ways, when um, Acts was happening and the church started to thrive, um, many of the people in the church would, would sell their possessions in order to provide for others or to support others. They would sacrifice their own um, uh, wants for the needs of others. They would sacrifice. And this is something that is a very Christian theme and, and it's very um, important for us to understand. It's a very good thing for us as Christians to take wants and, need, uh, wants and needs very uh, differently. Needs are something that we do need to uh, uh, uphold and wants are things that, that maybe we, we choose to sacrifice on behalf of others. We choose to sacrifice on, on behalf of showing the kind of sacrifice. And maybe in some ways we might sacrifice some of our needs in order to provide for the needs of others. So the wealthier Christians who, who had much would, would do this. They would provide, they would sacrifice for others around them. And... Um, there, there was uh, a reliance on these wealthy Christians um, for, for those that weren't wealthy. Some of them relied on them because uh, they were fearful of the future. They're like, we need something. We need to try to thrive and survive in this season and wait for Christ's coming. We need to try to stay alive as long as possible for Christ's coming so that once he comes, we can join him in glory. Another aspect was an aspect of laziness that many people saw that they were being given from these wealthy Christians, and they chose not to sacrifice. They chose not to work. They chose not to be diligent for their future because they were being given free, freely from others. When we look at this understanding, uh, there's a fear of the future and also a laziness towards the future. And when we put these two things together, uh, Paul is responding to the people here by giving them very specific uh, callings in this passage. Um, when we look at, starting from verse 12, it says, We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle. Uh, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all, see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. So there's this idea of a lot of commands that Paul is giving unto them, but there's, this, there's this also this idea that, that we want to encourage those, we want to admonish, we want to encourage and push those that are idle, those that aren't doing much. And Paul is showing all of these uh, encouragements, but also these commands to the people of Thessalonica, Thessalonica so that they can understand that they need to move, that they can't just sit around lazily. If the future is going to come, then we just wait for it. If this is going to happen, then you just wait. It is not for that, but it's for us to understand, for, for them to understand that they must still work. They must still be diligent. They must still work with excellence in what they have, even if they might not know what comes in the future. Even if they might not know what comes in the future, they must work in excellence for what they have because of who they represent. Because these are Christians in Thessalonica. Because these are Christian Thessalonians. Because they represent Christ. They must show their diligence because of who they represent. Because when they show their diligence, they become a testimony to the world of God's greatness. You see, uh, for us as Christians... Many times we don't dream or we don't think big or we don't look forward. Maybe we determine that uh, what we have or where we are is the best we can get to. Maybe we think that there is no future. Maybe we think that there is no way we can achieve more. But when we understand who God is, when we understand who Christ is, when we understand that God can take uh, what is little and make it great, when He takes the, the little faithfulness we may have and, and turn it into a great glory to the world to show who He is, then once we understand that, then we can respond and we can choose to work. We must choose to plan for the future. We can choose to be diligent 
Not for our glory, but for God's glory. You see, Paul uh, wanted the Thessalonians to really understand, to really understand that it's not just about them. It's not just about their lives and making sure their lives are cushy. They need to be pushed. The people, the Christians here, need to be pushed out of their laziness, need to be pushed out of their fear of the future, not because uh, it's just a better thing to do as a human being, not just because they just need to be uh, better people, but because of God, because of God. It's because that for them, they are uh, representing, they're doing good to one another. They are living in this way because that's how Christ lived and they are representing Christ in this world and in this city for them. We see from verse 16, it says, Rejoice always, pray without season, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God through, uh, in Christ Jesus for you. This is the will of God, Christ Jesus for you. God's will is represented in us doing well, in us being diligent, in us being um, productive. Sure, it might not always be in the amount of productiveness that we desire or, or we think is best, but when we are diligent, when we are um, working hard and we are faithful to God, He responds because He is glorified. When we think about the uh, parable of the talents, and how uh, an owner gave talents to three people in different amounts. And he, and he uh, raised up and he, and he glorified the two who turned their talents and doubled them. But he reprimanded the individual who took his talent and did nothing with it. For God, when we multiply the talents that we've been given, when we multiply what we've been given and look to the future and plan forward and do well diligently, then we give glory to God and He is pleased. When we are diligent and faithful to God, He takes that and He does the work. In the parable of the talents, it's the people doing the work and, and almost as if the, the, those that are working with their talents are the ones that have doubled it. But we see in this world, we see in uh, throughout history that those that are faithful to God, God will bless. Those that are, are diligent, those that work and, and, and are uh, focused on Christ, are faithful to Him, they are blessed. God will raise them up. Because when we are faithful with what God has given us, why would He not give us more to be faithful with? So when we think about our future, when we think about our plans and, and our work, I know that in the moment it can be very difficult. In the moment it can be, be very hard, and it's not meant to be easy. But as we work, when we give our faith to God, when we give our outcomes to God, and when we are diligent for the sake of God's glory, then we will see blessings on the other side. Whether it's a physical blessing in this world, or a blessing in recognition by God over us. When you are faithful with what God gives you, when you are faithful with little, God will always give you much. When you are faithful with little, God will always give you more. He will give you much, whether it's here or in heaven. Now, when it comes to the future, it's good for us to plan and work and, and have certain um, rules that we follow, certain uh, aspects of diligence and um, uh, effectiveness that we follow in our lives. As, as Paul is telling the people, he's commanding them to live a certain way. It's good for us to, to live a certain way and look forward and plan and, and not just rely on other people, not just rely that on, on the fact that maybe God will just let everything work out, but knowing and trusting that God is good. And God is faithful. Which leads me to my second point. Our response and attitude towards the future should be with thankfulness because of Christ. Our response and attitude towards the future should be with thankfulness because of Christ. The, the people in Thessalonica were worried about the future because they weren't sure what was going to happen after death. They weren't sure what was going to happen to them. They weren't sure that, it, they, because they believe that when Christ uh, returns, only from then on will those be glorified. But the ones before wouldn't. But we know 
in our faith, now with our understanding of Scripture, with our understanding of, of theology, we know that it's not just those that, 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 that come after Christ when he's in, his second, in His second coming, but even those now. From the moment these Thessalonians were worried till, till even now, all of those that come to believe, they will be glorified with Christ in the end. They will be glorified with Christ in the end, and we know that. We know that to be true. And so for us, because we know that to be true, and because we know of the character of Christ who came uh, once for salvation, He will come again for uh, the final redemption, because of who He is and what He has done, we can trust Him. Now, I'll be the first to say, I'll be the first to admit that I worry about the future. Uh, when we look at the current times, uh, this was a time, this, this year, 2020 was a year that might have brought a lot of stress and worry about the future to a lot of people. For me personally, uh, looking at the, the COVID-19 crisis and the pandemic and uh, realizing that this uh, sort of pandemic will not only affect the people of the world uh, in this season, but even as it passes, it will leave a lasting effect. It's been, it's been eight months eight plus months since we've started this pandemic. And, and, and that sort of timeline and that sort of uh, length of time really affects us deeply. So even if we get past this in the next month, by the end of this year, or in the beginning of next year, even if we get past this with the vaccine, there is a lasting effect that will happen and, and, leave, and it will leave on us in this generation those that have been affected by it. So for me, I worry, I worry. Even because the vaccine hasn't been released, I worry what will happen to us? What will happen to my son? We see the numbers in Texas of COVID uh, rising again, and, and, and I worry, is it just a matter of time before we all get it? When we look at the presidential election, uh, it was such a polarizing uh, uh, situation. You're either on one side or the other. You can't be in the middle, was kind of what the world's narrative was showing. You're either in support of one side or the other. And even amongst Christians, it was very polarizing. You're either choosing one side or you're choosing the other. You either stand for life because of, uh, you're fighting against uh, abortion or you're, fighting for, you're choosing life because you're fighting for, uh, racial against racial injustice. There's, there's, there's no middle ground in this debate. You're either one side or the other. If you choose to do it, then you're against this. If you choose to, it was just such a crazy and hectic time. Even now, as the presidential election is, is finalizing, it almost seems like it, it's not really going to end quite yet. It doesn't seem like it, it, it'll, it'll be over and that we'll just move past it. But even as we look and see that, that each party seems to have their own faults. I worried what would happen if this president came in, or this, uh, um, yeah, this president came in uh, to office. What happened if this individual came into office? What would happen? What would happen for us? It's very, it was a very stressful time, and, and I looked to the future, and I just thought, what kind of world am I setting up for my son? What kind of world is going to be here for my son? It was stressful. And not only are there these big picture stresses, but uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, small picture stresses as well. A lot, of picture, a lot of stress coming from our lives. The things that aren't quite working out the way we want them to, whether it's our relationships, whether it's uh, our jobs, whether it's our schooling. I've heard from many of our, our college students that, that they're really worried and, and, and their plan for their college uh, career may be extended because of this season and pandemic, because of this season of online learning. And they're not even sure what's going to happen next year. They're hoping for in-person, but the fear of COVID makes it harder. When we look at our church and how we're looking uh, forward now, how we see that many people are struggling spiritually in this season. If you, if you think you're struggling spiritually, you're not the only one. There are many that are. We look and see that there's so many things in this world that can cause anxiety, that can cause stress, so many things in this world that can cause us to worry about the future. 
But that's what happens when we look at the things now and in the things in the future. When, the things, when we look at the things of the future that we don't quite know, we don't know what's going to happen then. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. And when we continue to look at that, that can cause us stress and anxiety. So the things that we can look to and the things that we must stand on are the things that are solid. We must look to the things that are solid, which is the past and the present. The things that we know are the things that, are, that have happened in the past and the things that are happening now. That's what we know. That's what we can guarantee. The things that have happened and the things that are happening now. The things in the future, they'll come, but we don't know. And so when we look at the things in the past and we look at the things now, that's where we can find our hearts. That's where we can find our ability to hope. When we know and understand that the things that have happened and the things that are happening are all because of Christ, that we can build a heart of thankfulness and we can look forward and say those things will be okay. There is still hope. There's still a future. There is nothing to worry about or be anxious about. You see, when we realize and understand in the past that Christ has been faithful, and when we understand that Christ is being faithful right now, then we will know that Christ will be faithful in the future. Christ's faithfulness, understanding and seeing Christ's faithfulness, gives us a heart of thankfulness. Gives us a heart of thankfulness because we see what Christ has done for us. When we look into our past, when we look into our past, see how our life has come about. And, and although there might have been hardships and difficulties, uh, we can say, oh, well, you know, Christ provided this, or Christ provided that, or Christ provided this family in the church. Christ provided my, my, uh, uh, my immediate family. Christ provided my friends. Christ provided me life, physical life, and spiritual life. And when we remember that, we are thankful. We are humbled and we are thankful and know that Christ has been faithful which makes us thankful and it leads us to have a future trust in His faithfulness. When we look back, when we look in this immediate time and say, ah, Christ has been faithful and we are so thankful for Him. And we can look to the future and say, because of what Christ has done, because of what Christ is doing, Christ will in the future. We understand that Christ is never changing. He is faithful always. The way He has been is the way He will be. Uh, he is and the way He will be. The way Christ has been is the way Christ is and the way Christ will be. When we understand that, then we can be thankful now for the past and the present and we can be hopeful for the future. Because of Christ's faithfulness and never-changing character, we too must seek to be like Him. Because of what Christ has done and because of what Christ is doing, we should seek to imitate that for the future. We must seek to imitate that for what is coming in the future. As Christ has been faithful to us, we imitate by being faithful to others. Whether that means your family, your friends, your church body, we are faithful to them. We are supporting them. We are praying for them. We are calling, checking up on them. As a church, we must rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and be, give thanks in all circumstances and respond to those around us. Paul calls us to do that. We rejoice. We pray. We give thanks. And in response to that, we respond by seeking to sanctify ourselves and sanctify others. In verse 23, it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God of, the God of peace himself sanctify you. May he sanctify you completely. May he make you more and more like Christ. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless. So you live more like Christ afterwards. You are being sanctified. May allow for God in the future to, to continue to sanctify you. Continue to work in you. To be more like Christ. 
to turn away from the things of sin that you might have held to when Christ was faithful to you. Turn away from sin and turn towards Christ into the future. As if two lines coming together and eventually intersecting when God knows we are seeking to become more and more like Christ as we head more and more into the future. And as we do that, as we become more and more like Christ, we are able to be more and more thankful because we see what Christ has done. We're able to be more diligent towards our future. But we're also able to be more trusting of God and faithful to Him into our future. As we turn to become blameless, more and more like Christ, then we are to be more like Him in our actions, seeking others, being faithful to others. I'm not expecting everyone to have been perfect in this season, but let's seek to be better in the coming season. If you haven't met with for us, we are called to be a people to become more like Christ because of what He has done, because of a heart of thankfulness. And so we respond with others. We see ourselves faithful and pouring out to others like Christ did. The, the wealthy in Thessalonica, they poured out and they sacrificed to others. Now, we may not be the wealthiest of people. You may not be the wealthiest of people. But we do also understand that Christ has given us much. Maybe not just in the physical, but in the spiritual he has given us life, and because we have that life, we can give at least that life to others. At least that life to others. Sure, we can give much more, and I, and I would call you to if your heart is convicted to. But we all have something that we can give. Even in the parable of the talents, each of them, each of the individuals was given talents. So we all have something. It's just up to you to be willing to give. And as we are shaped and molded in our character, we become more like Christ, become blameless. And we love those around us. Now, in the midst of all of this, you may still feel a sort of anxiousness, a worry of your future. But we must know and we understand that there is always hope. In a time when it was darkest for sinners, Christ came. It reminds me of a scene uh, from Lord of the Rings. And there was this scene where uh, the, the uh, people, the, the elves and the humans were fighting these orcs and they came and it almost seemed like they were about to be finished. They were outnumbered from the beginning, but in the very end, it seemed like it was almost over. And just as the sun was peeking out over the darkest of nights, Gandalf shows up. Gandalf shows up, and he comes and saves everyone. He turns the tide of the battle, and they win. For us, in many ways, it might be like, you might seem like you're, you're at wit's end. You may seem like there's just nothing else you can do. You may seem like your life is basically over. There's no future or there's no way to progress forward. But let me tell you, if Christ can give you life, there is always a future. If Christ can give you life, there is always a future. The same God who saved the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt can save you from your hardship and struggle. And he shows us that by the past, by showing us that he was the one who sent Christ, his son, as the ultimate salvation, as the ultimate rescue from our sins, which was the greatest struggle and will be the greatest struggle that we would ever have to overcome. It's the only thing that separates us from God. And God sent His Son to bring us back to Him. In Matthew 6, uh, 25 to 34, uh, it talks about Jesus is telling uh, those that are following Him not to be anxious, not to worry. He said, why do you worry about what you're going to eat or the future? 
The Thessalonians worried about their future because they weren't sure what would happen to them if they died before Christ returned. They weren't sure what was going to happen to them, and they were, they were worried about that. They thought they would be doomed if they died. If God, like uh, in Matthew 6, as Jesus taught, if God can grow the flowers of the field into such beauty, and He can provide for the birds of the air and for their needs, even when they're not able to just store up for their future like we can, how much more would He provide for us? How much more does He provide the wisdom and the ability and the effort and the work and the strength and the conviction to move, to, prov to provide, to prepare, and ultimately to have our needs met. Instead of us worrying um, about the future and just sitting on what is there, let us take time to, to, to see the past. Let us take time to see the present. Let us take time to see that Christ has been faithful and is faithful. And when we see those things, let us be thankful for that. Let us be thankful for how Christ has been and is and find hope in what will be. When we have thankfulness for what has been and what is, we find hope in what will be. God has been faithful. He is faithful. And He will always be faithful. Let that thankfulness carry on into our future. Let it carry on for us to be um, mindful, diligent, and wise for our future. To prepare a way for us to be glor a, a, a glorification of God through our lives. The main point of my sermon was that we work and plan for the future in thankfulness that Christ is faithful. Our future, the way we respond to what is to come, the way our actions show, the way our words show, it responds, it's a response out of the thankfulness of what Christ has done. It's a response out of the faithfulness of, of Christ in our lives. When we understand that, when we understand that He has been faithful and He is faithful, only then can we truly be thankful. And only then can we look to the future with hope. Only then can we look to the future knowing that God will be there. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us not hold everything on the future, but let us look to the past. Let us see our lives now see the blessings, the many blessings that we have through Christ's faithfulness, building a heart of thankfulness and taking that thankfulness into our future to give glory to God. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for uh, this message, the message that reminds us of your faithfulness. Let us lift up to your glory all that you have done, all that you are doing out of thankfulness, knowing that you will then be faithful in our future. No matter what we think of this current situation and what is happening, we know your character will never change and your faithfulness will continue. So Lord, help us to cling to that, to counter our worry, to counter our anxiety, to respond with humility, thankfulness, and glory to your name. Lord, we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you are king
Father God, we thank you for your character, for your faithfulness, how it never changes. Lord, we lift up all of this glory to you. We lift up this message to you. Help us to align our hearts with you. Help us to be thankful of, of our past, our present, and help us to respond with thankfulness into the future. Help us to know that we can be thankful of what's to come because we know that you will be there. Help us to respond, giving you glory. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We just want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, please join us for our fellowship time over Zoom now. Um, and as we uh, kind of conclude this time of thankfulness, leading up to Thanksgiving, um, continue to find things to be thankful about. Uh, and as we do that, let us pray. Let us continue to pray for our EM body that we are thankful for. I'm thankful for each and every one of you and your heart and your passion for Christ. And I hope that it will continue to grow, continue to grow, knowing what He has done and knowing what He is doing and knowing what He will do. I just want to thank you guys for joining us. I'll see you in our fellowship time.